Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And I'm back with another entry into this uh, series, or I guess what is now potentially becoming a series of reimagining Pokemon in an isometric pixel art style. I did the first one of these uh, about a month ago, I think, which was the player bedroom from the first game. And a lot of you suggested it'd be nice to see other locations or other moments in this kind of style to sort of work up. And I agree with that. Uh, plus, it also seems like a great way for me just to get more practice with the isometric perspective. So just like before, uh, this is being made on a canvas size of 160 by 144 pixels, which is the resolution of the Game Boy screen, uh, just as kind of a fun nod to the original game. I've started here by laying out this isometric grid, and this is gonna help provide uh, some practical guidelines that I can use to build up the features of the room. I've also brought in that sprite of red from that previous piece to help with scaling purposes, uh, just so that I know how large to make certain things like, you know, doors and chairs and whatnot. And basically I'll just keep things consistent between the two artworks. I actually wasn't planning on making another entry into this series so soon, uh, but as fate would have it, there's that new Pokemon concierge show that just came out. And I watched through that and it, it just had me immediately wanting to explore some pixel art related to that. Now, if you haven't heard of the show, by the way, it's kind of this like slice of life side story set at a resort for Pokemon. And it's all done with stop motion puppets and props and things, and it just all looks so beautiful. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is to recreate the main lobby area of that resort from the show. Um, so I'm gonna start by building the room itself, and then we can take that and kind of decorate it and fill it out with a bunch of Pokemon and stuff. Um, but for now, the first, I guess, sort of like feature pieces I put in here were the rounded front desk. And then there's a staircase that kind of wraps around behind that. Now, I figured that these things together would essentially be like this nucleation point for the setting and essentially would help dictate like how the rest of the space could be used, like what would be left over. So I wanted to get those ones in early. Um, by the way, the like spiral staircase or whatever here, probably one of the more challenging things to have to jump into right off the bat. Um, I also wish I had some sort of tip for you for like how to arrange a curved staircase in an isometric pixel art style like this. But instead of giving it any careful thought like that, my approach for this time was basically to panic and then to attempt uh, drawing the whole thing freehand. And it went as well as it should have, I guess. Um, so if you have any spiral staircase pointers, feel free to let me know. One of the challenges with recreating this space was just figuring out how much could actually fit into view for this particular canvas size. Um, in the actual set, there's sort of this initial floor with the speckling, and then that comes down into this square tiled portion, which then leads to some water. And then further off the water, there's a small island. Um, it's really beautiful, but to actually fit it into this canvas space, I've had to do a bit of a balancing act and, and kind of condense all those layers into this limited size. So it's not quite as spacious as how it appears in the show, uh, but there's at least some representation of the different flooring and the different areas that you can see. And it's all just been kind of abstracted down to fit this particular sizing. I think in some ways it's gonna be a good thing because it's actually kind of increasing the visual density of the artwork. Uh, like once this is filled out, there should be a lot of interesting things to see in such a small area. But I guess that's also kind of on me to make sure that it is properly filled out as well, I guess. Now, for that rounded reception desk, it's kind of hard to see in the show. Uh, in fact, I'm not even certain that this is the case, but I think it may only be rounded for a portion of it, and then it kind of straightens out on the side that's near the wall there, um, kind of like a question mark shape. And then I think it's open on the back to allow you to pass under the staircase and kind of come around from that side. And I'd also seen uh, there was this like behind the scenes images uh, that seemed to corroborate this sort of shape to the desk. Um, but either way, that's sort of the editing that I'm doing right now for the desk and uh, just also giving it a bit of detail too. Throughout the lobby, there's also quite a few pillars and these kinds of elements are obviously a little bit tricky when we're making something that's already oriented from above um, because they're basically supporting a roof structure that we're not seeing. So I placed them in and just terminated them at a set length. And I think that does a decent job communicating a bit more of the architecture here. You could probably try putting in some of the like cross beams and stuff for more interest, but I didn't want to really clutter things up with that sort of stuff and actually like obstruct the view of the characters or whatever. Also, I should mention that the reason that I'm working in grayscale right now is just because I hadn't settled on what sorts of colors I wanted to use quite yet. 
Uh, going along with the Game Boy feel, it is going to be a limited palette of only four colors, so I've got four grayscale tones at play for now. And honestly, this is a pretty great way to work since it just removes color from the equation altogether, and you can really just focus on how bright or how dark you want things to be relative to each other. And that's made even easier when you are limited to only four tones. Uh, you know, you've got limited options there, so the answer is usually fairly clear. The next thing I want to do though is to make all the sprite work for the Pokemon. So I think settling on a color scheme is actually necessary before moving forward because it's going to be nice to see the way that the specific colors are being used in those designs while I'm making them. So what I think is going to be the most versatile and representative is to recolor this using blue and green. Uh, since the overall mood of this, uh, of the show and stuff is kind of like this balmy paradise feel. So it just kind of quite literally grabbing colors for water and grass. Um, but I remember as well, like, I think maybe it's one of the default Super Game Boy palettes uses these kind of tones also. So there is something kind of familiar about this as well. Either way, with the colors sorted out, it's now time for arguably one of the more fun bits, which is to make a bunch of the Pokemon sprites that can fill out this resort scene. So I hope you're ready for the onslaught of Pokemon sprite time lapse right now. I think there's like 10 of them that we're going to go through, uh, but you can see the reference images there for whatever I'm making in that moment. I probably won't be able to keep up here with each of these uh, Pokemon discussion wise. So let me just say that like in general, my approach was to start off with kind of a rough silhouette in black uh, that would focus on certain key features. Uh, you know, if it's like a tail or there's a unique piece on the head or something like that. Um, those are really important for just being able to recognize what Pokemon it is, uh, particularly since these things are being made in such a small scale too. Um, from the rough silhouette, I then color in the main tones, and primarily I was sort of looking at how the faces were being framed in that resulting space. Uh, for some of them, I actually even started from the eyes specifically, and then shaped out a head around the eyes. And the reason that the eyes and face are such a focal point for me is that I find those to be one of the places where you can easily reinforce the isometric perspective. Um, like you can see with the sprite of red there, that just having one eye set one pixel lower than the other just sort of helps show that slight askew overhead angle to it. So it's always nice when you can find an anchor like that and then kind of follow that isometric angle across the character to help you place features on either side of the body. One of the more interesting predicaments here was having to make unique art for each of these uh, three like monkey type Pokemon. Um, so basically there are these three monkeys and they're all a similar design but each one has a different elemental type. So there's Pan Sage, who's a grass type. Uh, there's Pan Poor, who's a water type. And there's Pan Seer, who's a fire type and also has the funniest name of the three. Uh, the most noticeable ways to identify each of them are just by the unique shape on the top of their head. Uh, but then of course, just by the overall color scheme as well. So this works out well for Pan Sage and Pan Poor because we've got the green and the blue already as part of the palette here. But for my boy Pansir, we've got to double dip a bit because there are no other colors that could really fit here. So the distinction that I've gone for, uh, albeit very subtle, is that Pan Sage, who's the actual green monkey, does of course use the green tone, but also uses a bit of blue for shading. And then for Pansir, who's the red monkey, um, I've actually just sort of tried to overuse uh, the white tone as a, a bright highlight everywhere. And there, there of course still needs to be like detailing and shading and stuff. So the green is there providing that sort of support. But overall, there is at least something different about the way that colors are used on each of them, uh, as well as obviously their actual features. Plus I've tried to give them sort of different expressions and body language to kind of differentiate them as well. All right, so it's been a long road getting to this point, but the reward now is getting to place each of the Pokemon around the scene. And I didn't have too much of a plan for this. Um, obviously, I decided to put Diglett over on the patch of land. Uh, but for a lot of the others, I was just playing around with what looks good. Uh, the nice thing about isometric sprites, uh, or I guess any really sort of like off-center sprite for that matter, is that you can just mirror them to face the other direction. And then that kind of helps break things up just as far as like not having everybody face the same way. Uh, another thing that I was keeping in mind was just that there were going to be other things that are going to be added to the scene as well. Uh, most notably, we need a sprite for the main character, Haru. And that one I made by editing the sprite of red because I already liked the overall look and it seemed like the easiest way just to keep things consistent between these two pixel art pieces. Um, so in a sense, like this artwork is of 
uh, Pokemon Concierge, but I'm kind of treating it like it's an interpretation of the world of that show through the lens of this pixel art style, rather than trying to make pixel art that looks like it was trying to imitate the art style of the show, if that makes sense. I probably over explained that. I may be losing it, but that's all right, <laughs> because uh, I guess right now we're on the home stretch and just kind of filling out the remaining background details to solidify the look of the resort. Um, the show really does such a nice job with this sort of detail-oriented staging. Uh, like, it feels like there's so much to always see in the background, and it really adds to the immersion and kind of the real feel of this place. And it's even more impressive knowing that a lot of these things are actual miniatures and stop-motion props and things like that. So I'm really just doing my best to capture a small piece of that kind of detailing. So let's go ahead now and take a look at how the final Pokemon Resort came out. Here we go. All right, so even with all the busyness and the details going on with the scene, I feel like the final touch it really needed was just this little bit of an animated pulse in the character work. Uh, so most of these animations that I added here are just simple two-frame loops that oscillate back and forth, uh, but even that I find can really bring things to life in a nice way. So with that, we'll go ahead and close this out with some CRT time. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square. <laughs>